up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoy what I do, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be made aware as new content becomes available. In this video, I wanted to talk about three different ways in which I use the invert selection function in Studio One. All right, number one. When you have events such as this, one shortcut that I like to use is Shift-R. That will transfer the event selection to a range selection. Now, what I have here is a lead vocal, and then let's say that we recorded some other vocals against this over here. What we can do is if we use the invert selection function, like that, let's do that one more time so it brings us back to our other highlighted choice. We can simply include these different tracks in, and then if I use invert selection and shift R, if I delete it, it's a really, really quick way to get the exact same edits. Now this also has to do with some other things. So for example, if we use our invert selection again, first of all, shift R to transfer the event selection to a range selection. Let's say that I wanted to do some automation of some sort. If I open up my envelopes, right click and expand envelopes. If I use invert selection over here, now I have these different sections that have been highlighted and I can move those all together. So really, really useful tool when editing automation. Let's close these envelopes. And in fact, let's just hide and disable these tracks. The next way I like to use invert selection is when I'm editing MIDI. If I wanted to, for example, select these notes and let's say I wanted everything else selected, what I would do is I would first make a note selection across the note data here and then I would just use invert selection. Now this also works if we wanted to select, for example, the lowest notes. If we use invert selection, we would get all the rest of them or if we wanted to select the highest notes, if we used invert selection, we would get the rest of them. Worth mentioning that there are some very useful macros in here that allows you to do similar things, but I still like making some manual selections and using invert selection. And last but not least, let's open up this performance over here. One thing that I like to do when I'm editing, let's say drums, let's say if we needed to edit these different velocities. So a really, really simple pattern. It doesn't work in the drum mode, but if we move over to the main piano roll mode, and let's do a option double click, what I can do is hold down the command key, and then I could, for example, select all of these. Let's say that I wanted to adjust the velocity of everything else other than this. Well, I can use my invert selection, and then option and command, or that would be alt and control on a PC. I could move the velocity of all of the other notes. And then of course, doing the invert selection, this gives me the ability to set the velocity for all of these. So this only works in the piano roll, but command clicking to select all of the note data on that individual pitch and then invert selection to give myself the opposite selection of whatever I need to edit there. So those are the main three different ways that I like to use invert selection. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. If you enjoyed this content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions and comments, do leave them down below and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.